Sandra. All right. I guess I'll introduce this project by saying I'm currently in Indonesia. Well, I'm not currently in Indonesia. I was in Indonesia. I was currently in Indonesia. Or at some point, at some point, I was currently in Indonesia with an environmental organization called Rio. All right, I should redo that. We're about to haul back this net. We were towing it there for around five minutes. Let's see what we got. Can't even put it out of the water. After one of Rio's beach cleanup events, a group of local fishermen offered to take us to a part of the country that very few people have ever seen. Historically, fishing has been a big part of Indonesian life, and now we're about to see one of the reasons why this once thriving industry has all but collapsed. All but collapsed is one of those phrases that sounds like it could be a, could be a good thing, you know? I mean, technically it includes everything except collapse, which could mean massive success, but I guess in this case, it, it doesn't include any of the, the good stuff. It's all bad, but yeah, whatever. It's 5 a.m. Uh, we are headed to the beach for the beach cleanup event here in just a few minutes. Uh, I made a cup of this disgrace. Traffic in Indonesian cities is pretty crazy. Not only are the roads overly crowded, but there are a lot of intersections where you would normally expect to find a, a traffic, uh, you know, like an old-fashioned stop light, traffic light thing, and instead they've opted to go with about half a dozen Indonesian men frantically running between cars, doing sort of a hybrid between directing traffic and asking for money. Good. Rio had a ocean beach cleanup over the last few days. We had thousands of people along the beach that collected plastic and other trash and debris that was in the water and along the shoreline. Well, the goal was to come down to this beach, it's northwest of Jakarta, and help that community. Uh, there's one community there that the houses are, are lining the beach and their, their front door goes out onto the beach and when they walked out their front door they were pretty much walking on plastic. They couldn't walk on the sand to get down to the water. We had people coming from over three, four hours away on a scooter, on a moped with the camping equipment just to be here today and, and it, that really blew me away. I was literally putting my hands in the gloves, pulling it up and it was, you think you're putting in a bag of sand but it's just full it's of plastics and you just kind of get rid of it, you know? We make another small pass on that beach though, and that's, that's a huge difference. Yeah. In that little community there, right? Yeah. Well, that's their front door. Yeah. It's now eight o'clock. Just got back from a long day of shooting. I am very sunburned and I have a bit of a predicament. These are my shoes. Just absolutely drenched. There's a mall right across the street from my hotel and I'm gonna see if I can find another pair of shoes and then I'm going to go to bed as soon as possible because I am so exhausted. <laughs> see you probably tomorrow. The whole floor of the river here is completely caked with plastics. It's meters high on the bottom here in places. We navigated through here four days ago in a boat to go down to the beach and back again. We had to stop maybe five times so the, so the boat captain could cut plastic off of the propeller. So just trying to navigate this river has become a hazard from the plastic. Forget about trying to fish here. Today, that was his catch. A few kilos of shrimp, maybe three kilos of shrimp and a few cuttlefish.
We're about to haul back this net. We were towing it there for around five minutes. Um, let's see what we got. Can't even pull it out of the water. It's in five minutes. Yeah, 100 kilos in that, 200 pounds. Catching that much plastic in this river is not particularly unusual, but now we're on our way to see something that very few people have ever seen, with an occasional stop to cut plastic out of the propeller. There are places that feel like completely different planets, and this would turn out to be one of them. Plastic from all over the world accumulates here. Some of it is from Indonesia, but a lot of it originates in the rest of Asia or other places as far away as Western Europe and it's been washing ashore for decades. If you can feel the weight of it, look. It's like walking on a trampoline, right? We're here on the beach here in Tanjumburam. This is an area here uh, west of Jakarta. As you look all around us here, the amount of plastic we have is, is absolutely mind-boggling. The estimation of what's here is anywhere up to 100,000 tons in this, in this particular area. The commercial fishing industry here has been decimated because of this plastic waste. See this beach completely cleaned up with some big equipment is completely doable. And to see it after it's cleaned would be amazing. It would be earth shattering. In the end, that's why Rio is here. In addition to organizing cleanup events, they also set up production facilities that can take collected material and recycle it into all kinds of eco-friendly products, including shoes, straws, paper products, and much more. This, in turn, can help local economies where fishing is no longer possible. I grew up on a little fishing village uh, on the southeast coast of Ireland, a little village called Helvig, on the, on the Waterford, County Waterford coast. My father was a fisherman. My grandfather was a fisherman, and all my family before them were, were also commercial fishermen. So at a very young age, we were, we were introduced into that you know, industry, and we, were, we made our livings on it for, for many, many years. So it went from harvesting fish to taking plastic from the ocean. And I think about it, like, you know, how crazy is that? Like you, you spend your whole life harvesting seafood. Now we go out and we retrieve massive volumes of plastic, boatloads of plastic, where years ago we used to bring in boatloads of fish. 